Hi guys, Yasas Kekalos Sirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making a delicious walnut cake that is egg free, dairy free, moist, delicious, and comes together in a big bowl. No fancy equipment needed. So easy to make, like I said. I had this while I was in New York visiting my mom. She made it and it was just so delicious. I had to get the recipe and share it with you guys. And I shared a lot of funny things um, about the recipe on my Instagram stories. So follow me there if you don't already do that. So you can just take a sneak peek on what I'm working on. But this cake was delicious. It was a challenge getting the recipe right because I don't know if you guys get recipes from your family members like moms, aunts, grandmas, they're usually very hard to figure out. It's like a cup of this, but not this cup, that cup, a glass of this, but it has to be a, a drinking glass, not a, I don't know, so many different things. So it took me four times to get it right, but I got it right and it's moist and delicious and perfect. If you're fasting for Lent or if you're vegan and you want something that goes great with coffee, this is it, let's get started. So we're gonna start off um, with the egg substitute and I've tested a few different things because when I had this cake at my mom's house, although it was moist and good, it kind of crumbled a little bit too much because it was missing that egg that holds everything together. So I tested it with canned pumpkin, which you can use. It's gonna make it a little more orange, but pumpkin doesn't really have much flavor. It is gonna add moisture, make it a little bit more dense, it's pretty delicious. So you could do this, but my favorite thing when I was testing was um, what they call a flax egg in baking. And it's basically ground up flax seeds. You're gonna need four tablespoons of them. It's a giant bag that I get from Costco because I like to add some to my water and just drink it. It's really healthy. And a half a cup of water. Just mix it up and let it sit while you get all the other ingredients ready. And this is gonna act sort of like an egg in the cake. But again, you can use pumpkin, you can use banana if you don't mind changing the flavor because banana does have a lot of flavor. You can also use applesauce and all those options will be listed on the blog. So now we're gonna get the dry ingredients ready. So I have three cups or 400 grams of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm gonna add the zest of an orange. I have these little tangerines here, so I'm gonna use a few of them. I don't know why I'm holding the cup. <laughs> I need the zester, the microplane. If you're using an orange, all you need is one, otherwise use two of these small ones. We're gonna need two tablespoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. I always go with heaping teaspoons like that because I love cinnamon. If you're not too crazy about it, you could just flatten them out, that's fine. And then just whisk it all up. Now, when my mom gave me this recipe, she used 500 grams, which is a bag of self-rising flour, which I never have. And I am not a fan of getting one special ingredient to make, you know, to use for one cake. So I tested the recipe with all-purpose flour and found that 400 grams of all-purpose flour works just as good. All-purpose flour is known as plain flour overseas. So let me move that to the side. The dry ingredients are done. Now we're gonna juice the oranges. We're gonna need one and a third cups of orange juice. Okay, three million years and 17 clementines or tangerines, oranges later, you have a little bit of orange juice in here. If you have store-bought orange juice, it's perfectly fine to use in this case. If you don't wanna sit here juicing oranges for 15 minutes, it's up to you. I'd rather eat these to be honest than put them in a cake, but I don't have any um, store-bought orange juice, so that's why I use these. And I use all of them. It looks like it's not even a one and a third cup, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in this. And clean as you go, makes life so much easier. Now we're gonna mix the wet ingredients. So for the wet ingredients, we are going to start with one cup of sugar. So I'm gonna add the cup first because then I have to measure the olive oil. Sugar is usually considered a wet ingredient because it melts in with the wet ingredients. That's that's why it's a wet ingredient, even though it's technically a dry ingredient. Then we're gonna add one and a third cups of, this is refined light olive oil. I usually buy it from Costco, not sponsored, but if they wanna sponsor me, please be my guest. <laughs> um, it's very light in flavor. If you use a cold pressed olive oil for this, it's gonna be very heavy. Cold pressed olive oil is better for making savory dishes, 
salads, things like that. It's really not that good in cakes. It's too heavy. The flavor is too strong. So use either a light olive oil like a pomace oil or your favorite vegetable oil, whatever you like. I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla extract and the flax eggs that we just made. I hate calling them eggs, but they basically do what eggs would do in a recipe. And I'm just gonna mix this all up. Then we need half a teaspoon of baking soda. And I like to add the baking soda in, in the orange juice because it'll dilute better and you won't get that bitter bite of baking soda that sometimes ends up in cakes if you add the baking soda to the dry ingredients. That's why I have started adding baking soda to my wet ingredients and the flavor never gets messed up. Add that to the bowl. And do it on top of the bowl because it bubbles up. Have you ever done that science project, I think in second grade, where you make a volcano and you combine an acid like vinegar with baking soda? It's pretty much the same thing. It's gonna rise up and make a mess if you don't put it on top of the bowl. Anyway, mix that all together. And then we're just gonna add the dry ingredients in a few batches. If you want a moist, light cake, you never wanna overmix the flour. Just mix it in until it's just incorporated and then stop. The more you mix flour, the more it turns into bread. And even though the flour is not fully mixed in, I'm gonna stop right here because the walnuts have to go in too and I don't wanna over mix this. You need a cup of ground walnuts. So I like to keep them ground. I use them a lot in recipes, so they're usually in my freezer in a nice big bag. A cup goes in there, and I should, <laughs> I should have used a cup that didn't have oil in it. Just mix that all up, fold them in. This is going to be a very light uh, batter. You don't want it to be thick, okay? That looks good. I have a 9 by 13 inch baking pan that I'm just going to grease with a little bit of oil. You can use pan spray if you prefer, but since we're already using this in the recipe, I'm going to stick with it. and then transfer the batter. You can throw some raisins in here if you want, some shredded carrot, even sweetened coconut would be nice in this. You could put a cup of sweetened coconut, whatever your, dry, your favorite dried fruit is would go really nice in this. Let me know how you're making it. Spread it out evenly. Does not get easier than this. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna bake on the center rack for between 35 to 40 minutes. Check it at the 35 minute mark. You don't want it to over bake. Just insert a toothpick to the center, into the center of the cake. If it comes out clean, it's ready. Take it out, don't overcook it, otherwise it's going to dry out. You could even check it at the 30 minute mark because ovens really do vary. Once it comes out, let it cool completely. Then you can just cut it into portions, sprinkle some confectioner sugar on top, put it on a serving dish, make some coffee and call some friends over. My cake was ready in 35 minutes and it just took about 15, 25 minutes for it to cool. It was ready to go. The house smells incredible. I would actually sprinkle a little more cinnamon on top of the powdered sugar too, just because I love cinnamon, but it's up to you. Make some coffee, which I do have cooking in the back, and call some friends over, like I said before, because this is worth sharing. It's so light, it's so good. I need to take a bite. Mm. It's moist. I love the crunch from the walnuts, the little hint of spice from the cinnamon. Not too sweet either. That's why if you add the powdered sugar on top, it's not gonna take it over the edge and make it overly sweet. If you want it less sweet, three quarters of a cup would be enough too. It's up to you. You could even add a little quarter teaspoon of cloves, of ground cloves to this to get more of like a baklava flavor if that's what you like. The options are endless. I hope you give it a try. Let me know what you think if you do. If you want to learn how to make Greek coffee to serve with this, click over here and I will see you right over there. Yes, us.